on today's episode. When researching my video for this lithium charger, I was intrigued to see this line in the product description. Can also be used for white LED constant current drive, set a lithium drive one, set dual lithium drive two strings. Now what on earth does that mean? Thinking about it, a lithium battery charger is no more than a specialised constant current source, which is what you need to drive LEDs. I remember a product that was listed as an LED driver, and in fact used it as a battery charger, uh, in that particular case for lead acid cells. It can be possible. Let's see if we can get it to work. The enigmatic line in the product description said white LEDs. Now, is this some new kind of discrimination? Well, no. The, uh, the reason behind that lies between the difference between different coloured LEDs and their forward voltage drop. The white LED has a forward voltage drop of 3 volts, 2.99. A blue LED, 2.74 volts. A green LED, 1.94 volts. And finally, a red LED, just 1.76 volts. Now, why is this important to us? What we are, in effect, trying to do is to fool this LiPo charger into thinking that there's a battery attached when there isn't, there's only an LED. If we have a LiPo cell attached to this and its voltage is less than 3 volts, the device will go into a, a pre-charge like a trickle charge state until the voltage comes up to 3. Between 3 volts and 4.1 volts it will be in its constant current stage and uh, it will drive the load. The product description also said a strip of LEDs. These days this is what we would think of as a, a strip of LEDs. Now, this has built-in resistors and is set for a specific voltage. In this case it's set for 12 volts and it's an arrangement of 3 LEDs probably in series and then wired to each other in parallel so that it can work on 12 volts. My strip of LEDs is just going to be these five here that I found out of my box of scraps and I've checked them with my meter. The board is at its sort of factory settings. The jumper that you need to bridge for two cells is open so it's only expecting one cell and would output up to 4.2 volts. Here is my string of LEDs. So let's see if we can light them. Clearly we have a, a working LED driver. Just as an aside, one, one of them didn't light and you might assume that it's, uh, it's a faulty component. But if we do test it, we can see in fact that it is identified still as a diode with a forward volt drop of 1.32 volts. So what's going on here? This guy is an infrared LED. Here we can see that the infrared diode is, is glowing and that can only be seen obviously with, with a camera. You cannot see it with the naked eye. This is a useful trick. Often when you visit somebody's house they'll say, oh my remote for my telly is not working, can you take a look at it? And almost invariably it will be a problem with the batteries. They've either, they're either flat or they've leaked. And you can easily test that by pointing the remote control at your phone. And if you don't see this magenta colour flashing away, then uh, it's time to, to look at those batteries. Anyway, we digress. If you're anything like me, then you'll be wondering, well, how many LEDs can we drive with this guy? Let's check out this, uh, this string of, how should we say, festive lights. Festive lights. We don't want the PC police banging on the door. That looks pretty festive to me. However, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that there are some LEDs that are not lit. Now these ones will be the blue LEDs. As you remember, they have a much higher forward voltage requirement and I guess that the green and the red LEDs are, are hogging all the current and preventing the voltage getting sufficiently high for these LEDs to strike. But it's still quite a pleasing effect. I can sense the pent-up excitement waiting to see two strings of LEDs being driven, but sadly I'm going to have to disappoint you. 
I have set the board now to the 8.4 volt setting, but my idea was to try and see if we could light this uh, 10 watt uh, LED. This is supposed to strike from around 9 volts. Let's see. Yes, so that's a, another alternative use. The little meter here is showing the voltage across the LED, and here we can see the current, which is only some 40 milliamps. Perhaps there could be an application here for making a emergency light or a light in a, in a shed where you could have a, a 12 volt battery perhaps being charged by a solar panel and then you'd have this that you could use to light your way in the dark and it wouldn't be consuming very much power at all. There is now no other light source in the room and uh, this is certainly sufficient to be able to uh, see my way around. What can we conclude from all of this? Well, it is certainly possible to use either this TP5100 or indeed the uh, older TP4056 as a constant current LED driver, as we can clearly see. Uh, would I do it all the time? Perhaps not. There are other more elegant solutions, but in a pinch, and if you happen to have a bunch of other boards around, then, then why not? This is an example of uh, an LED driver, which I, indeed I've used to drive this LED at much higher currents, it may be admitted, but there again, it is pretty much two times the size, three times the size. So in a pinch or strapped for, for, for space, this is a viable solution.